Okay. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Again, I want to introduce myself. My name is Mikey Sopchek, the Director of Environmental Health, Safety, and Security with the KSOLV Group. To recap who the KSOLV Group is, it's a diversified organization inclusive of KSOLV, Garner Disaster Response Services, and OMI Environmental Emergency Response Services. Can you spell your first name off first? I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. First name, Mikey, M-I-K-I-E. Last name, Sopchek, S-O-P-C-Z-A-K. To recap the events that started yesterday, we had a fire that began at one of our small quantity storage warehouse facilities off Days of Allah Road. That fire then spread to a second warehouse storage facility. During this time, our personnel initiated our facility response plan and notified the emergency personnel necessary to include the Channel View Fire Department. All necessary emergency response resources, both public and private sector, were mobilized to the event. This happened approximately 1600 to 1615 hours yesterday. During this response activity, we conducted a media event at 1800 hours yesterday. At the conclusion of that media event at approximately 1830 hours, we were informed that the fire was extinguished. We have resources on site at that time and continue to do so to conduct air monitoring and to monitor for hot spots as we did throughout the night. A few hot spots were identified and they were immediately extinguished within a matter of minutes throughout the night. To capture what's today's objectives. We've implemented the incident command structure. It's in place with a unified effort with regulatory agencies and the scene is under the jurisdiction of the Harris County Fire Marshals investigators and it will remain so until released by the organization. A few hours, approximately about an hour ago, we were given access to a portion of the facility that allows us to it, include what products were involved in our situation that again that was approximately an hour ago and we have an active effort to identify exactly what products were involved as that information becomes available that information will be disseminated amount to the regulatory agencies and they will disseminate it out as they see fit I'd like to remind you all we've established a link on our website ksolve.com Go to the link for the Days of Allah information and additional information will be conveyed through that link. If there's another media event scheduled, we will communicate it out through that link on the website. We appreciate your concerns. Our priority remains the protection of the public health, the first responders, and our workforce in general. Thank you for your time. Let's talk about the air quality. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, you're monitoring them. You think being, I guess, monitored at the field time? Or how is there a lag or what's the we have personnel on site conducting perimeter monitoring real time that information is being conveyed to the regulatory agents and then the regulatory agencies will disseminate it, that information out uh, as we indicated yesterday the Harris County Pollution Control initiated all air monitoring efforts to substantiate this uh, uh, I want to say the in place shelter and as they indicated yesterday there were uh, the the levels were within acceptable ranges any possible water contamination? I know that was brought up yesterday as well. Correct. The best information we have at this point is that the materials have remained on site. We continue to gather additional information throughout the day. We have a very fluid situation and it continues to change and will change as more information becomes available. We will disseminate that information out. I don't totally understand what you guys KSOLV Group is a, is a very diversified company inclusive of three organizations. KSOLV, Garner Disaster Response Services, which provide disaster response services at the federal and state levels, and OMI Environmental Emergency Response Services that provides environmental emergency response services for both the public and private sector. Uh, all the products involved in the incident yesterday were in support of those environmental and emergency response services for the environment to include our, our partnership on the petrochemical in the ship channel area. That includes... If like a chemical spill, you would go clean that up or... Yes, ma'am. That's what we do. And we've had a history in this area of at least 40 years going back that that's those services we've provided to both the public and private sector. How does it feel to now have your own kind of disaster right at home? Well, it's a reality. Um, and we feel confident that we're prepared through the experience we've generated throughout the years uh, that we can act responsibly to mitigate those hazards as quick as possible. And I think you saw that yesterday, how quick the fire was extinguishes, the amount of resources we deployed in a very quick manner, and the response you see to this point. Can you uh, talk about how the employees were evacuated? I was reading some information about 
maybe evacuated by boat? Yes, yeah, so you have to understand at this facility, at the Days of Bala facility, we have two type of operations, a land base and a maritime base. The maritime based operations consist of barge activities. A natural part of our response plan is that boat activities are secured there so that in the event emergency is called, they need to evacuate via waterway, they can do so. They initiated their emergency response plan, acted as such, and left the site via the boats to the secure location. The people on land, our employee base that was on our land operations, did just the same, but they went to their designated rally point, activating their response plan. I want to remind everyone that with these two separate operations, the only operations that were impacted were our land-based operations with our two uh, small quantity warehouse storages. Our maritime operations with our bulk storage and our barge operations have not been impacted and they remain operational to date. So the warehouse would have supplies that you use to do these cleanup activities? Yes, ma'am. The products involved are in support of our emergency and environmental re, uh, response activities. Sorbents, sorbent pads, sorbent materials. I'm sorry, that sorbent. Uh, sorbent pads, sorbent materials in response uh, to support response activities for both hazardous and non hazardous environmental response activities, in addition to support products for our petrochemical partnership on the ship channel for tank cleaning and activities as such. Do they do tank cleaning on, in those maritime operations? No, ma'am. Tank cleaning is not done. They do barge activities for the maritime side. What does that mean? The barge activities are in process of uh, reclaiming any unleft product in the barges, reclaiming it for recycling and reprocessing, and preparing the barge for new commodities to be used for. So cleaning the barges? Surfacing the barges, yes, ma'am. And I'm sorry, so you said it was the two small warehouses that support land activities where the fire was, but the barge activities have bulk storage that was not affected. Correct, ma'am. And they remain 100% operational. And why is it so hard? I mean, this comes up for us in every, in every incident like this. It's so difficult to know what's actually burning. Yeah, that's a good question. So what a lot of people don't realize is this isn't, for us, this is an active distribution facility, and it is ongoing receiving and sending shipments throughout the day, literally minute to minute, hour to hour. When emergency happens, we initiate an emergency response plan, the facility response plan, and we put emphasis on preservation of life and the health and safety of the public and the first responders. So as such, the most pressing issue is that. Now, when incidents like this happen and the regulatory agencies take control of the site, such as the Harris County Fire Marshal's investigators have authority, we are not allowed access to that until they grant us access. So as you can see in a fluid situation, inventory constantly changing, that's when we need access to the inventory so we can update. So you don't know day to day what's there? We do know day to day. But uh, like I said, because the ongoing operation literally changes minute to minute, this was an active ongoing distribution activity when this incident occurred. So in order for us to process the most accurate information, we had to have access to the facility to gain that information. We were just granted that access approximately one hour ago and are actively processing that information now in conjunction with providing the information to the regulatory officials. So you mean somebody was dropping something off at the time? What do you mean this was an active distribution? I guess I don't know quite how it starts. Okay, an active di distribution center is shipping and receiving goods and products on a regular basis. Do you know more about how it started? At this time, we were under the impression a transfer activity was being conducted on a small quantity scale and an ignition occurred. The investigation is still ongoing to uh, validate that at this point, we cannot prove that that was the cause, and that's where the investigation will lead us. Transfer of a chemical? A product. A product? Yes, ma'am. From what to what? We believe it was a small quantity transfer from a tote to a drum. A what? Uh, from a tote to a drum. Tote. Tote, T-O-T-E. What's that? A tote is a roughly a square container, approximately 250 to 330 gallons, depending on the manufacturer. And then. Sorry, I know. That's okay. I uh, hope I'm giving you accurate information that will help you with that. Yeah, I mean, I think we just want to explain to our readers and I'm sure to their viewers, like, it's just hard to understand what literally happened. Yeah. 
Yeah, again, and that's what we want to emphasize here is this was not large tanks and large bulks. This was small quantity. Uh, again, totes and drums. But that fire was so giant. You no, know, it was a storage facility. So that's what's key here is you have to understand at a storage facility, that's where you contain all your items. I'll give you an example such as a Walmart distribution center. They keep everything in bulk at their distribution center. It's all there. Uh, that This was basically our one of our distribution centers small warehouse and a little bit larger warehouse and it quickly uh, ignited and spread rapidly were you on site at the time i was on site at approximately 1645 445 it happened between 1600 and 1615 four o'clock to 415. what was it like when you got there um, it was a fire I mean, it was it was a fire with first responders and agencies acting responsibly to protect the, the public safety. More details will end up being posted. Um, well, so as I don't know if there's anybody here who could kind of talk about what I don't know what that's like if you're literally on the job and like you say they're trained to evacuate. I don't know if there's anybody who could tell us kind of walk us through that. So the, well, I mean, I think Mikey did a really good explanation of how how that process goes. Yeah. At this point. You know, we've got, to the mic, please? At this point, we have the active scene going on. That's what we're concerned about getting back to, getting you know, gaining that access so that we can provide those details as needed. But um, at this point, that's all of the details that we have. What's your name? Say and spell your first and last name. Give us the title. Lori Krupa, L-O-R-I, K-R-U, P-P-A, um, Director of Marketing and Public Relations. All right, folks, thank you. We've got to get back to the incident command for briefings. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. And remember, any 